let's do that hands thing. And for that one, I just want to change my camera because I have this one. Yeah. But more than that, and I have an object store. Bench. Oh, no. So let's dive into it for about three, four minutes, five minutes. Ah, and again, first, before you tap into the sensation of your hands, just acknowledge everything there is in your body, in your acoustic field, sensations, feelings, emotions, so that all of you is welcome. So not, it's not about to change anything, it's just about to bring awareness into your body and into your sensory capacity of your body. And while you do that, bring your attention to your physical form. Um, I invite you to bring all your attention just yeah, into your skin in your hands. And make connection with that object slowly and gentle and no rush no goal and whenever your mind starts flipping around and going into different scenarios that's fine too bring your attention straight back there in the sensation in your skin in your hands and whatever runs through your feelings and your emotional body, that's all fine to bring your attention straight back to the sensations in your hands. And again, the formula here is slow down by half and slow down by half again. And sometimes to really feel it needs maybe some intensity and some pressure so that you can really make connection. That might be some intense feeling of maybe slightly pain that you can really tap into your hands. And that invitation is to move really soft, slowly. And look for this tinglish legend sensation somewhere between your fingers or on your palm, maybe your fingertips. Somewhere where it feels delicious. And when you find a spot where it feels nice and I invite you just to stay right there. Yeah, where it feels good already. this place of effortless being and sensing. It's 
um, no productivity or goal or reaching anywhere. Just you and your senses there in your skin. Morning. Well, the most important Art here is to just recognize that you are in action towards a felt sense of pleasure. It's all that to move by choice towards what feels nice to you. Uh, the question here is how can you feel even more of yourself by doing that? Mm. Realizing that there is no end and no substitution to that. Morning. Hang on them slowly and gentle. Movement to a stop. Stay there for a moment. And just observe and notice what you notice in your body.
No. No. And give a little attention back to the screen. And um, share anything that you notice, anything that was coming at us, anything. You like. Just said that about the the connection of the soul. Um, I found this foreword in my book, and it is this story where this uh, child is talking to the grandma and asking, um, "So, how do you connect with your soul?" And then grandma says, "Just like, well, you use your hands. The hands are the antenna of the soul." So just oh. Uh, so any, anybody brought anything for today? Anything you want to talk, share, um, discover, explore, dive deeper with? Um, uh, I have something on the edge I would like to share. Um, but up to you. I would like to share something. So we were just talking about this thing about man and um, coming into their body because this is what most men lacking of without actually knowing. And this is what most women complain that men are not present in their body and asking, oh, can you be more present? And then we, so we're doing, we're planning this uh, Sunday on the uh, 28th uh, sexual mastery webinar just for men. So if you know many who just want to kind of join. So we want to talk about the distinction between celibacy. So he is celibate and I'm exactly on the other side of the spectrum, kind of mastering the orgasmic edge and showing men how to be sexual without the goal. And um, so, yeah. So if you know anybody, <laughs> please uh, invite them. Um, yes. Sorry, ladies. If Where we only think. You know, if I would narrow that down into a specific dynamic and theme, so the difference between men and uh, women kind of physiology and anatomy and understanding is the main thing specifically for women is the uh, vagus connect connection from the uterus to the social engagement system, so to the heart and lungs to the face. I just had a, a, a she talked with a friend the other day that so, so I can see when women are connected to their uterus because they carry their womb in their face. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes they say you, you carry your heart in your face. I personally can I can see when a woman carries her womb in her face. So the, the interesting thing here is that this we we men we don't have this. Um, vagus connection to our genitals. So we have that what most women have. This is this is what I, I call that the zero point, uh, the 2.0 wiring in women's bodies. It's, it's just like a complete more advanced, like a dual processor. But the thing is mm -hmm. that the um, a, a sensory stimuli between men and women is pretty much similar. So that it's the um, pudenda nerve that runs through the spine and kind of comes out of the kind of lower part of the spine and then connects to all the outside area of the skin, you know, the, the uh, um, in the man's body, the, the sectrum, the, the balls, the penis, the gland. This is all um, outside uh, nerve uh, wiring. And that's what in women's body is pretty much similar uh, in the wiring, specifically the nerve ending connected to the clitoris. And this is this is what man gets so freaking wrong because we are wired that way that the first thing that we touch because this is our primal kind of go-to in touch, we go first to our genitals. And that's what men do in most women's dynamics as far as I um 
see that in an unconscious way when I talk with couples, they go straight to the clip because it's based on our wiring this way. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's so, it's so interesting that, um, specifically then in the, in the, in the kind of anatomy about the plus and minus wiring that, um, men are in their genitals positive wired and women are negative wired. And that means that women in their wiring need another touch first before they're going into the genital touch. And this is so, so interesting to, to, to get that from the polarization, the nervous system thing. But the, the main thing is if, and, and this is, this is since, I don't know, I'm doing that now almost since 10 years teaching men. So this approach is like, get your hands connected. So when you get your hands connected, then you don't have a goal. You don't have the agenda. You don't need to go through this kind of touching to assume a response that you project because you would go to the genitals first because you're in a male's body. So do you, you can then use your hands as a sensual stimuli touching any part of a woman's body without being attached to either the outcome or the uh, genital touch in the first place. So just like get that going in your hands, activate them, and then take the goal out of your touch. It changes the complete landscape of sensual and sexual arousal in, in touch and engagement. So fascinating, isn't it? It's so interesting, you know, when I, when I started my tantric journey or my tantric awakening, whatever that is in 1997 or so. So I had this, um, kind of a breakdown kind of was suicidal Saturn returned to really kind of hardcore, uh, dynamics. And then I started to read a book. So that was before internet literally went out, came out before we searched somewhere on YouTube or somewhere else. It's like, I had to go to a real library and buy a book <laughs> to read about Tantra. And the interesting thing what was written there, that was my first introduction to it. I can't really remember the name of the book, but they were talking as well, this triangle in a woman's body. And, and they said, as a man, if you want to master that energy, you need to activate the triangle. And years later, I found out from another teacher that uh, in, in a woman's body, the connection between the nipples and the uterus or the, the, the genitals is called the milk line. Yeah, so, so this is when women, so for example, breastfeed, that this milk line, they're getting activated and some women getting orgasmic when they're breastfeed. This is really fascinating. So I, 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 I kind of have a memory. Well, we, we can have a discussion about that, but I remember an energetic dynamic of the turn on of my mom, me breastfeeding. Well, it was a cellular memory. I, I got that somehow on an, on an ayahuasca trip or so. So I just, I went, we went into this dynamic. So what was written in that book, so that we men have to activate this milk lines and this triangle. And the thing is, ever since, and I do that since over 25 years, my go-to when I'm going into self-pleasure is this triangle. Before I touch my genitals, I need to touch my nipples to to be able to go into a turn on and I can just touch my nipples and I can get an erection. And that's really, really fascinating, but that only works in my own, um, neurological wiring. If somebody else would come to me and do that, like you said, I would just probably go violent <laughs> if somebody does that to me. But if, if I do that to myself, it's just like, whoa, this is like, yeah, hallelujah. It's just like a firework of sparks. Absolutely fascinating. What I what I have done in the morning in the de honoring training when I did this TRE, um, I think that was on the third or the fourth time when I did the TRE, I, I implemented sexual energy when I asked touching the nipples and touching touching uh, um, uh, kind of uh, breasts and uh, and um, uh, to show that the that the uh, vibration that is happening under TRE and the orgasmic experience is not only related to trauma release, it's as well related to an orgasmic expression or orgasmic um, experience. And I was just uh, so, but I just want to 
connected as well to this dynamic of the of the nipples and of the of the sensual experience in the skin and so uh, yeah still my go-to I, I don't know where I want to go to with that but it just came up it just pops up in my in my mind uh talking about that yeah and I mean this is this is so fascinating and you know I'm just have this half knowledge about that but I I love to share the way I see it specifically being um you know, in the field for, for I don't know, 25 years or so, that the, you know, how to say that, the fascinating point being in a man's body is that mo most men live their sexuality only on survive, without them actually knowing that. And that reproduction and orgasm and ejaculation is part of um, uh, the addictive it's not an addiction but the addictive behavior going towards that goal to make it quick and make it fast is based on um you know in this position of procreation or sexual encounter we are extremely vulnerable yeah and it's dangerous when we going into this vulnerable position because we are still on sympathetic dynamic yeah we are still on the sympathetic approach. But when it's vulnerable, we have to just take care that we can be um, invaded or just like uh, uh, overwhelmed by an enemy uh, when we are in sexual act. We have to finish it as quick as we possibly can. This is the kind of neurologically, the, the, you know, the, the wiring of the animal in us. And and this is just my perception of sexuality. Men still live their sexuality on that path of procreation. It has to go fast and it has to go to this goal and it has to be productive. And this is so fascinating that um, when I'm when I'm sharing that specifically for for for, for men going onto this other realm into their sexuality, going from procreation into this journey of rejuvenation. So there's kind of, um, so how can you find joy and pleasure that is just fun, that's just nice, that's playful, that has not the goal. Just like you play because you play. You don't play to win. You don't play to go to an end. You don't play to have this ending. You play because it's, it's nice, it's sensual, it's good, and you can enjoy yourself. Yeah? And when you take the goal out, you can enjoy yourself into infinity. There's so much pleasure and enjoy. This is just like literally infinite. So, so when it comes from this place of procreation into um, uh, recreation, it's just like the first step. And that was my first experience when I just went into that. And the next step from kind of recreation of sex is kind of rejuvenating sex. And this is where the kind of spiritual journey starts, or this the journey of transformation, the journey of um, going into the realm of, you know, this is your health insurance. <laughs> Pay it. Do it. You know, take care of it. Maintain it. Uh, uh, so, so this entire semen retention thing, using your sexual energy for um, staying fit in your body, staying healthy. You know, just like do this this thing of instead of giving all this energy out, kind of just like do this reverse mechanism that you actually feed your organs with your life force energy. So it's kind of stay in your strength and stay in your in your power and stay healthy and stay strong. You know? And then when this goes from this the, the kind of yoga approach of sexuality, when that goes into the other realm of transformation, and this is really the fascinating thing. Um, and I was just like really looking that up, that the transformative part of sexuality is DMT related. So DMT, dimethyl tryptamine, and this is the the release in the pineal gland and the kind of visionary um, experience through the release of DMT, like many have that, for example, in LSD or mushrooms or ayahuasca or, you know, all this other kind of stuff, is a specific molecule ch uh, chain that, that is being released in, there's a little chamber between the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. And this chamber has this um, cerebrospinal fluid. And when that is getting 
flooded with DMT when you are in the sexual dynamic, uh, you have this kind of visual stimuli. So I call that this liquid light experience when you are longer than half an hour in the sexual expression uh, of, you know, all this energy, you have all these hormones, oxytocin, serotonin, melatonin, you know, dopamine, all that stuff. It's just playing all this kind of uh, orchestra in your body on a neurophysiological level. And then you have this kind of thing opening up. But here comes a thing that men can't do that on their own. And th this is just a theory. And but it might be true or not. But what, what happened is when women are connected and this the uterus connection, so the, 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 the connection of the uh, vagus nerve from the uterus, from the womb, into the social engagement system, into the brain. So it's a bit, it's super complex and complicated. But the wiring into the brain that there is a connection in the woman's body from the uterus as a spiritual experience in, into the pineal gland. And the thing is, when men connecting that with their genitals, they have the ability to serve in this realm of where women can go by nature. And what you just said is so interesting, Anne-Marie, is that you had with another woman this wound-to-wound -wound connection and that was an orgasmic state because it's true or not. I don't know. I just totally make that up, but it sounds true to me. So if you connect minus to minus, it creates a plus and that's an, it's a connection. Yeah. But if you have two main genitals coming together because there's a different wiring, there is nothing going on because plus and plus is only giving a cockfight. <laughs> it's just that I kind of tried to make a joke. Sorry, I'm German now and I'm not funny, but... <laughs> is it resonating or is it bullshit? I don't know. What do you think? No, I am... Um... And this for all of you. Um... Like, I'm just... Throwing that in, and if you if you're not resonating with that, what I'm saying, you can just totally question it. All of you. The, um, the main thing, as far as I know, is the kind of G spot connection. You know, so so the 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 G spot is an equivalent of the prostate. So so the G spot yes. is, is is the same tissue, uh, differently uh, developed in, in in a woman's body, and of course there's an ejaculation, and and most women experience. Yeah. You know, but when you just see that yes. in, in, in the dynamics of um, the goal and the satisfaction related thing of just like it's it has to happen because it's so uh, uh, goal driven. It's 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 a complete different thing as a, as a woman is just like ejaculating by nature because it just like opens up this infinite loop of constant arousal it's just like the when the floodgates open it just you know just gets more juicy and more juicy but from the from a kind of a physiological point of view that was so fascinating so i studied years back with this midwife with silva Re refeld about uh the uh, the anatomy and she was explaining that to me that this the, the g-spot or the function of the g-spot is when the baby is literally in this position short the short before it comes out, the forehead is just pressing against the G spot as a sponge. Yeah. And when the pressure of the of the of the baby is pressing against the G spot is getting swollen with this fluid. And so so that the that the head of the baby is not getting da damaged on the inside of the pubic bone. So what happens then is when the pressure is really really strong enough of the baby to get out, the the um, fluid of the woman's ejaculation is literally um, antiseptic and it's um, cleaning out or making sure that the eyes of the of the baby are protected through all the blood and bacteria and all that so so that 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 the that the eyes are literally not getting damaged under the process of birth and that makes totally sense you know just like seeing this from that perspective but we have a really fantastic theme today I like that you know, this is so this is so interesting energetically and physiologically, emotionally, spiritually. Yeah. Uh, if all of that has to be aligned. If people don't have the 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 luck 
uh, or the privilege to find that by coincident by themselves, as far as I can tell over, I don't know how many hundreds of experiences that I had, is happens by a trans transmission to another person showing, showing it. And, you know, I've done, you know, uh, in the, um, between 2010 and 2017, 18, maybe 19, I don't know, I've done a few hundred, if, if not thousand sessions where I did sexual body work with people where I was initiating uh, um, men and women into this dynamics. So I just did really sexual body work with them. And um, the, the, the way how I experienced that, or no, the way how I did that was only possible through my own experience that I had. And I found it by coincident. You know, my coincident was that when I was, when, when I was playing on myself, so in, in, in the, in the terms of self-pleasure, I had no access to it. If I have not used the sensory inflow of my skin, like you said that the electricity, the, the, the kind of, uh, a chemical dynamic, you know, and what I would say, the system needs to be flooded with, with oxytocin before you can get even close to it. And that needs the sensory activation of the skin that mm. needs to be in place first, no matter what. Yeah. Mm. And the, yeah. The, interesting, the interesting thing is as soon the turn on comes in, so dopamine, and then you just start breathing <laughs> melatonin, and you just have serotonin release, and then you feel like euphoric and have this kind of thing. If And, and this is the main thing specifically for, for, for women, if they are conditioned the way how men live their sexuality. So if women are conditioned into the climaxing goal. So it has to be satisfactional and it has to be um, exciting. Uh, otherwise, sexuality is not um, beneficial enough. So if women are trained this way, you, you, your nervous system is sympathetically wired into this contraction thing, it won't work. So it has to go into the opposite. And that's something that I had to learn, you know, over years yeah. and to decode my nervous system from the sympathetic contraction into the parasympathetic relaxation and expansion. Yeah. And what really works it's for great. me, one second, please. And what, what really works for me, and I, I try to answer your question there, Nicola, when I'm getting in this place of this turn on and I'm feeling this, you know, the, the male arousal is you just have the turn on and then you go on the plateau. And when you're on the plateau, then you have this emission phase and, and the top of the emission phase, this is where the explosion happens. So the climax is happening. So you have to be careful on the plateau that you don't go too high on the emission phase. It's just like a spark that is just like creates an explosion on kerosene or something so you have to be on this plateau and whenever you feel like you can getting too close to this emission phase you have to neutralize your body chemistry through oxytocin so you have to go back into feeling and specifically if 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 you're wired and trained to go into this contraction based orgasm state you have to completely let that go but you have to you have to stay with it so so you have to stay as a and I don't know if that's true. Exactly what is happening um, when, when, when it goes to this state of climax, allow yourself to lose your erection, get soft, let the energy flush back into your body, fill up your entire system with all this kind of neurotransmitter and hormones and relax into it and then come back to your hands and then Feel your genitals, feel the sensual, extreme pleasurable <laughs> sensation on the skin. And this is such a delicious turn on. And this is kind of what happens is it starts with very small kind of waves. Yeah. What, when, when, when this is happening, but the, like you said, Anne Marie, it's like the, the, the waves getting bigger, like in, in uh, in TRE, when you just start to release, it, it, this involuntary shaking starts to happen, and then you just go into these orgasmic stages. And what happens is, and I have that, you know, I do that maybe once a month, intentionally on purpose because it's so pleasurable. I have, you know, a full day on a self pleasure practice, and I have 50, 60 orgasms. 
orgasmic stages, not climaxes, orgasms. And they're, 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 just, they're so fantastic and they're so beautiful. But I can't repeat that on a the, on the daily basis. I don't want to repeat that on a daily basis because it's, it's just so exhausting. But it's not draining like yeah, no. relation, mm -hmm. but it's absolutely beautifully and fulfilling. Yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't even say it is a sexual orgasm. I would say it's a, yeah. kind of a spiritual orgasm. And the sexual experience is just like the trans transmitter of it. So, 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 so the sexual energy helps me to go into the spiritual realm. And um, the de-armoring, my experience of that is uh, when I started with this tantric idea, or when I started with this climaxing um, uh, exploration, I was thinking I can have as many climaxes ejaculatory climaxes as I want to. So I thought it's just like the multi climax that is infinite and goes forever. So the ejaculation that, that, that never ends, that was my illusion in that. And the way how I went into that is that I trained my nervous system into this contracting kind of holding, controlling thing. And what I learned over the years more and more that if I want to go into this um, spiritual state or in this orgasmic, you know, I call that this days the orgasmic grid. It's just like it's, it's an energy field that is existing. And when I'm vibrating in the right frequency, it's just like I can tap in and I'm becoming part of a field that is much bigger than I actually am. It's just like it's, it's just infinite. And what my body needs to be is kind of an open vessel to conduct that energy and go into that vibration and put into this expansion. But it didn't happen when I was contracted and when I was in this holding dynamic. And that was the idea of getting the sympathetic contraction control mechanism that is stored in the muscular tissue and everywhere in my body get that out through the release of all the tension and holding patterns and then going into this place of um, relaxation and expansion. And that's the dynamic in the armoring, kind of you opening up the, the pipe, the vessel of conductivity to vibrate in this orgasmic grid and um, tune into this orgasmic energy field. That's, that's how close I can describe that. I say it and then it's gone. But, you know, this is what I have experienced over many, many, many years, the natural state of women's bodies. And this is for women much more um, natural to access and tapping into, except women having a kind of um, a masculine um, condition pattern in kind of holding themselves and, and going into this control and goal and, 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 and uh, directiveness and um, kind of the uh, rational mental structure uh, form of the left brain hemisphere. And that my experience is just like what I'm talking about is more like this is just pure right brain. This is just pure the, the, the kind of infinite. When I'm in this place, sometimes I play with this dynamic. I just want to bridge that with the left brain and kind of being capable of being functional. And sometimes I just want to, when I'm in this state, I'm just like, oh my God, I just want to record that. I just want to hold that. But it's just like, I can't think, I can't. I can't put A and B together and plug stuff in. It's just like, and I have to train myself being kind of capable of being functional. If I want to record that and even speak into that and, and being capable of that, technically I have to set up everything before, but then I cannot plan to go into that. It would be like, I just want to trick the divine. So it has to be a kind of a coincidence that is um, uh, supportive enough that this download is happening and is kind of captured somehow. Um, it's 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 really hard to show. It's hard to explain. It's hard to yeah. This is this is so fascinating. Specifically, uh, you know what I uh, wanted to say. If now with with the nipples, for example, when I when I play on my own, you know, I have this I have this two vacuum nipple suckers, you know, and let's put them on my nipples, and 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 it's just like. When I started with them, it was just extremely painful. And I was just like, I cannot handle that. And then I remembered 
my my ex-wife when she was breastfeeding how she was suffering in the beginning of breastfeeding this pain and then the the midwife who came and talked about that she said just like well just breathe through it and you know and your nervous system, your nipples, and, and, and this milk, everything will opening up and you will adapt to that. So I was sitting there with this nipple sucker <laughs> and trying to neutralize it with sexual <laughs> energy and recalibrate my nervous system into this experience. And, and, and it flipped, it worked on the other side and it was absolutely fascinating. So it's, it's a really, really important part. But what I want to share is one, one thing is, uh, to capture that when you ask me, hey, have you recorded that? Is it kind of, have you written it down or somewhere? I, I had in 2010 an experience with a woman in a, in a session and we agreed both that we have, uh, that I made a recording of it, a video recording. Yeah. And um, so, so what we were doing um, was, and I share that, I don't know, can I do that? Yes, it's just, don't say any names. So we were spay, uh, playing with a speculum, yeah. And um, what we did uh, was w not of, of this kind of gynecologic uh, uh, kind of metal cold things was like a plastic one. So so we were playing with her cervix, and she never have seen her cervix. So I opened it up, and I was playing um, with with her cervix, and I had a camera with a with a little light on it, and I was going in to record that for her, and then I was playing with it and showing her the, 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 the responses. Yeah. And what happened in her, she got so turned on. I don't know why it was, maybe it was the camera. There was the, the, the awareness of the observer. I don't know what it was, but she went into this most multi orgasmic state and she had 15 minutes. This, this incredible expansion was just like this orgasmic moaning waving into this my god it's just like ooh, and 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 i tapped into her energy field as a practitioner in there and i got orgasmic in her field you know it was just like oh my god is this, is that, and i could not you know, hold my camera i was just standing there and shaking just like oh my god it was like i have it on camera it's just like it's so incredible and and we were just in awe it was so, so delicious and beautiful and then we were just like you know, just like in this place, and and then there was the afterglow, and 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 took I don't know an hour before uh, everything kind of went into the more smooth place, and then we just just like we have recorded that, we have recorded that, isn't that amazing? So we took this recording and watched the recording later, and guess what? It was horrible. It was so bad. It was so bad because because you can't feel anything. The vibration, the the, the feel is not there. You just have a visual stimuli that goes from yeah. your third cranial nerve straight into your brain. And the <laughs> only thing that happens when I saw that is just like, oh my God, this woman suffers. Just fucking let her come, let her die. <laughs> you cannot transmit that through video. It's impossible. Some things you cannot cover. It's impossible to get that in the shot, right? What, what I have experienced that, and I had, I have worked with many women who had that. Um, it just depends on, um, the capacity of your partner. If he can, so it's hard for you to feel it yourself because from your anatomy, it's just like, it, I've seen women when they're doing a squat that they can just like with the other hand, push the hand in and then, um, kind of using Use, because the 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 uh, middle finger is longer, using the index finger and pulling the kind of roof of the uh, inner kind of um, uh, um, and now up in the the and what literally pulls the cervix upwards, and then you can go with the middle finger under it, or you just use the, the middle finger pulling it oh, up, okay. going with the index finger under, it, and then you can touch it with two fingers between. Yeah, I had a I had a client uh, once. And, uh, she, she was saying, um, uh, so, so after kind of doing cervical dearmoring and cervical activation with her, she was saying, this, you know, this, I hate God because what, what, what kind of, what kind of creation can that be to hiding your most delicious sexual organ that deep in your body that you can't hardly reach it yourself? 
the, the interesting thing is during this entire meeting, I had always something in my hand and play with it. It kind of keeps me really present. I love that. And we're coming slowly to an end. And I would like to give it to you guys having a short kind of check out. Um, uh, what's your, uh, how the day, what's your takeaway and uh, how do you feel right now? Whatever you want to share. All right. Thank you so much.